On December 27, 2024, China launched its first-in-class drone carrier slash amphibious assault ship, the O-76 class. First ship was named Sichuan, after one of China's provinces. It's a pretty big ship. Other than China's dedicated aircraft carriers, it is China's biggest ship yet, slightly bigger than US helicopter landing ships like the Wasp class or America class, bigger than the French aircraft carrier De Gaulle, and roughly as big as the Indian aircraft carrier Vikrant. Of course, pure tonnage doesn't mean much without knowing its role. The Sichuan is so large because it couples a well dock for housing watercraft needed for amphibious landings with an oversized top deck designed to operate large attack drones. We are not talking about it operating drones similar to the US Reaper or such, but a 15-ton stealthy strike aircraft that happens to be piloted remotely plausibly with some autonomous features, for situations where enemy communication jamming might be too severe to uphold a command data link. This video will go in-depth on the features of the ship, its intended roles and capabilities, as well as explore the large attack drone already being prepped for it. The ship seems to be designed around the drone launch capability. China already has some smaller O-75 class helicopter and amphibious landing ships. Those two are quite large, at 36 or so thousand tons, close to US WASP class helicopter landing ships. They have a dock well for amphibious landings and a flat deck, but one designed around helicopter usage. The O-76, however, has a much larger top deck, and to support it, the hull itself saw changes. It's longer and it's probably a meter wider, though precise measurements are still not possible. Though this image also suggests differently shaped front section. The top deck also features a large overhang on the port side of the ship, much akin to aircraft carriers. Not counting the elevators, the ship's maximum width is larger than the USS America class, US biggest non-carrier ship. The America class is replacing the WASP class in US Navy. Some America class ships were made to be aviation carriers exclusively, though most will be combined amphibious landing and aviation carrying ships. Besides helicopters, those US ships also operate a few vertical landing aircraft, such as the F 35B. China doesn't have any VTOL combat planes and doesn't seem to be planning on making any for the foreseeable future. From the available imagery and measurements, the dimensions suggest a roughly 50,000 ton displacement when interpolating other known ships and displacements. While some Chinese media mentioned 40,000 tons for the ship, that likely doesn't relate to full displacement. The O-55 destroyer was also called a 10,000 ton class ship by Chinese media, while its full displacement is likely closer to 13,000 tons. The Sichuan holds a well dock that's likely as long as the one in its predecessor, the O-75. There's also a vehicle storage deck in front of it. Above those lies the aircraft hangar. Its dimensions are of course not known yet, though it's likely it is meant to hold a mix of various helicopters and fixed-wing unmanned aircraft. That being said, it's fixed-wing aircraft that are the focus of this ship. Shipbuilders wouldn't go through so much trouble making a custom design, bigger, wider ship equipped with a catapult for launching aircraft and resting gear to have those heavy aircraft land, if drones were just a sideshow addition to the ship. The catapult itself seems to be one of the same dimensions as the one on China's first large aircraft carrier, the Fujian. That's judging by the length of the protective shed over the catapult. Like on Fujian, the catapult is of electromagnetic type. There's also the jet blast deflector shield visible at the end of the catapult trench. A little bit towards the stern, openings and attachment points for the arresting gear system are visible. When you need a catapult to launch an aircraft, that implies an aircraft weighing several tons or more. Basically, the ship is meant to launch heavy jet-powered UAVs. The ship, however, can't accept UAVs with very large wingspans as the island structures would get in the way, which means that both takeoffs and landings are done at fairly high speeds, similar to speeds required for larger combat aircraft. Hence the need for the catapult and the arresting gear, 
accelerating and decelerating a heavy aircraft in just a hundred or so meters. There are two large aircraft elevators visible in a similar arrangement to the elevators on US WASP or America class. However, due to split islands, the Sichuan has one of its elevators positioned more towards the midpoint of the ship. That's also a decision that suits catapult and arresting gear operations better. Another reason why the island is split in two is management of engine intakes and exhausts. One wants those to be above the engines as much as possible, so extra space isn't wasted on ducts. Splitting the island also allows the command bridge to be more forward, while allowing the aviation bridge to be more to the back, so both those roles can do their job a bit more efficiently. Another peculiarity is the heavier self-defense armament. Compared to O-75's two-gun and two short-range SAM launchers, the O-76 has three of each. That said, it's still behind the US America-class ship, which also has medium-range SAM launchers. Longer-range SAM protection for O-76 would have to come from other ships, but that illustrates that no ship is meant to operate alone, and O-76 in particular is likely designed to be a part of a larger system. When the US Marines are to land a force, the smallest self-sustained and self-supported unit used would be the Marine Expeditionary Strike Group. Its landing element is made up of a San Antonio landing platform dock ship, a Whitby's Island dock landing ship, and an America-class or WASP-class landing helicopter assault ship. All three types of ships feature well docks to disembark smaller craft which will get them to shore, but only the WASP or America class have ample aviation facilities, not only to hold over a dozen helicopters, but also to house several VTOL jets. The role of those jets is to provide organic, immediate support to the expeditionary force as it's performing the landing, and to continue providing air power once the force is in place. China's concept seems to be somewhat similar yet different. Important to note is that the possible Taiwan landing is a special case. Sichuan contribution to a landing effort there would be less significant. But for other possible landings, where China, for example, wants to land on an island far away from China, it would most likely be relying on larger fleets, made up of one or two O-71 landing dock ships and one O-75 landing helicopter assault ship and then to provide support where most needed a O-76 class ship may be added to some of those groups. Probably not all, as there may not be enough O-76 ships available for some time to come. Right now, this is the only such ship and no other ships of the class have started construction. As we said, China doesn't have VTOL jets. The main role of such jets in US doctrine is not really to clear the skies from enemy jets. If such a threat exists, a landing wouldn't be attempted in the first place. The point of those VTOL jets is to provide immediate strikes on enemy positions from close by, so the Marines don't need to wait for an hour or so for other aircraft from some distant base to come to an area. The point of both the US America class and O-76 class ship is to be fairly close by to the landing zone, so it can react swiftly. Now, without VTOL jets, China went another route. It could have made an even bigger ship and have it be able to operate J-35s or similar manned fighter jets, but it decided to lean into a system that's more tailor-made for the requirement. The GJ-11 Attack UAV. That's a new UAV that's been in development for most of the 2010s. A detailed mock-up of it has been shown in the 2019 military parade, and it seemed the type is on cusp of being used by the Chinese Navy. In mid-2024, right near the shipyard where Sichuan was being built, an aviation facility was constructed, where either full-sized mock-ups or possibly even real GJ-11 drones appeared. Measuring objects in satellite images tells us that this naval variant of the GJ-11 is some 12 meters long and 14 meters wide. It's also got foldable wings. Knowing its shape and mission, those dimensions can then be compared to other similar UAV prototypes made in the West, like Boeing's X-45, X-47 and Phantom Ray strike drone demonstrators. Using those as comparison, it's plausible that the Chinese GJ-11 weighs around 5 tons empty and has a takeoff weight approaching 15 tons. It plausibly holds less fuel than similar US planes, 
as very long range may not be as important to Chinese use. After all, the US drones were contending to be launched from full-size US aircraft carriers, which could be a thousand miles away, while China intends to use its drone as immediate support, possibly just hundreds of miles away. Proximity of Taiwan and other first-chain islands to China's center of force projection would allow for such usage. Models of GJ-11 shown at air shows suggest bomb base sized for two large weapons, plausibly one-ton bombs, though models with four small form bombs per one bay have also been shown. The use of GJ-11 from Sichuan might plausibly look like this. As the landing party is approaching the target area, enemy contacts have been designated. A group of GJ-11s take off from the Sichuan and attack those targets. Some UAVs possibly stay in the air a bit behind, to provide strikes on new targets of opportunity. The drones then return to the ship in the group, ending the mission cycle. Such cycle operations are the norm for any sort of aircraft carrier. And while large aircraft carriers do have a token interception force, ready to be launched at any time, a strike-configured carrier like Sichuan doesn't have a need for it, nor is it equipped for it. Those GJ-11s are for attacking ground targets only. So the fact that the ship can't launch a plane and have a plane land on it simultaneously is not something that would be done anyway. Rather, a wave of planes would launch and then said wave would return. Then those planes would be cycled around for another wave. It has to be pointed out that no one really put a combat UAV of such class into service yet. Russia is working on one and several demonstrator aircraft were tested in the West, but not one made it into service. In a way, the effectiveness of the whole O-76 ship will depend on the ability of GJ-11 to actually go all the way to the front line, drop weapons onto targets, and survive and return often enough. That's not yet been proven. The deck of the ship looks large enough to have a dozen GJ-11s parked, with the landing strip unobstructed. Even though there's likely a fairly large hangar underneath, it's plausible not many more than said number of attack drones would usually be embarked. There are also other aircraft, especially helicopters, that would be a part of its regular air wing. Besides GJ-11, it's possible China intends to use other drone types, possibly for recon. Something in the class of WZ-10 is possible, though that's highly speculative, as so far no other large winged drone, other than GJ-11, has been observed being navalized. Certainly a dedicated long-range recon drone might come in handy, so such an addition can't be ruled out. The O-76 is really something in between of the two America-class subvariants. First two such US ships lack a well dock. They are all about aviation, and they can support more VTOL jet sorties. Later ships, first of which will be commissioned into service this year, will have a similar arrangement to WASP-class ships less room for aviation support, and a well dock. The O-76 has a smaller well dock than the O-71, as its main focus is on aviation, but also there are plenty of other Chinese ships to carry around troops and helicopters. The O-76 will be focused on aviation quite a bit, more so than the O-75. But it also retains the ability to actually deploy watercraft and have those land onto a beach. The peculiar thing about the O-76 ship is the fact China right now doesn't really see that much benefit from it. For the Taiwan contingency, its drones could just as easily be based on land. However, if a future conflict escalates and China wishes to threaten some farther away islands, then the O-76 would make more sense. US ships and their VTOL jets are a bit more flexible as the VTOL jets can be transferred to a small newly established airstrip on a taken island. As Chinese UAVs are not VTOL, they would require a larger airstrip once transferred from the ship. Right now, the Sichuan is a lone ship, perhaps even there just to test the concept. Maybe we won't see further ships soon, or further ships might see visible changes once Sichuan is tested. The ship needs to be furbished first, then it needs to do shipyard runs, and then do further tests once it's handed over to the Navy. All in all, three years might pass before it's ready for active service. By that time, it should be more clear just what the role of the ship is gonna be, and what its capabilities are gonna be. 
And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.